Let's try question number 32. We're going to solve. Now, why don't we try throwing the 3 over first? So we have 2x plus 2 equals x minus 3. And now we're going to square both sides. So the radical symbol disappears. And when you square this binomial, you get x squared minus 6x plus 9. We're going to throw everything to the right. So we have x squared minus 6x minus 2x is minus 8x. 9 minus 2 is 7. And the question is, can you factor this? And the answer is yes. What times what becomes 0? x equals 7 or x equals 1. Now before you assume that both answers are correct, you should substitute it back into the left side and the right side to see if these are correct. Let's try x equals 1 first. So left side is equals to the square root of 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3. So this becomes the square root of 4, which is 2, plus 3 is 5. Now the right side is simply x. Right side equals 1. So we can see there's a problem here. We need to reject this as extraneous. That's what we're doing. And it's sneaky when you're not told to check for extraneous roots, so make sure you check always as a good habit. Let's try x equals 7 left side equals the square root of 2 times 7 plus 2 plus 3 so we have 14 plus 2 is 16 the square root of 16 is 4 4 plus 3 is 7 and the right side is also simply x which is 7 left side equals right side so therefore this is a valid root and why don't we visualize it let's take a look at this uh, expression on Desmos. So here we punched in the equation y equals root 2x plus 2 plus 3 and the second function we wrote y equals x and the two graphs they intersect at x equals 7 that's the solution and if you want to find out the y value you simply plug in that x value into either equation I recommend the second one since it's so easy 7 comma 7 is the point of intersection and let's try number 33. Simply punch in sqrt, square root of x minus 1 on decimals.com, and y equals x minus 3. Clearly the answer is 5. And there's only one solution. If the square root graph flipped over, if you punched in y is equals to negative sqrt x minus 1, there's in a different dimension, there would be another answer of 2, but we need to reject that as extraneous. So let's just do this algebraically. Let's square both sides. So we get x minus 1 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. We're going to throw everything over. 9 plus 1 is 10. We're going to try to factor. And you realize that x could possibly be 5 or 2, but we need to reject one of these. We already did it for the first question, but we'll try it again. We'll try the, the 2 first. Left side equals the square root of 2 minus 1, and the right side is equals to 2. 2 minus 3, that's your x value. So the left side is going to be the square root of 1, which is 1, whereas the right side will be negative 1. Left side does not equal to the right side, therefore reject. Reject this extraneous root. Let's try the root x equals 5. Left side equals 5 minus 1. The square root of 4 is 2. Whereas the right side is going to be 5 minus 3, which is 2. 
left side equals right side, so this is a valid root. Squaring both sides of an equation is dangerous because when you square, we introduce a quadratic in which there's two possible answers. We may be introducing extraneous roots. When you say state an equation and you square both sides, it seems to make sense, but be careful. 9 equals 9 in this case, but if we have something like negative 2 equals negative 2, you agree. But when you square both sides, it seems very innocent. However, 4 equals 4 is correct. What if you erased this statement here? Let's uh, start with something more uh, ridiculous, such as two, does 2 equal negative 2? What a strange, absurd statement. But when you square both sides, it seems correct. So just be careful about squaring both sides. Always check for extraneous roots. And now it's your turn. Solve the square root of 1 minus 3x minus 3 equals x. And check for extraneous roots.